Hi, Mike Mogan here. I'd like to share a solution that I came up with to uh, fixing the delamination issue on your RV or travel trailer. I've seen some other videos out there that uh, recommend injecting uh, epoxy glue in behind the delaminating exterior wall and then putting pressure up against the exterior wall uh, while that epoxy dries. And I, I just really don't think that that's the best permanent solution. Uh, so I'd like to share an idea that I came up with and um, see what you guys think. Here's a little bit better look at uh, the issue that I'm having. Um, I don't know if you can see the bubbles in this side of the trailer, um, but you know, this stuff is no longer attached to the side of the trailer. Uh, this kind of happened to me on, on the highway down to uh, Firefly Music Festival. And uh, I had to pull over on the shoulder because I could see in my rear view mirror that this was flapping in the wind. Uh, so that was a big problem. And I pulled over and temporarily duct taped it uh, just so I could get to my destination. Uh, and now we're gonna try to get it, get it fixed uh, more permanently. But uh, one of the issues here is that there's this channel uh, along the front side here uh, where this exterior sheeting is supposed to fit inside of that channel. Uh, so right now, you know, it's almost like you have to bend it, bend it to go back, to go back in underneath of that uh, for, the, for the permanent solution. So we're going to try to fix that. Looks like, you know, this is all separating all up in here. Uh, I'm going to have to take some of those screws out initially. Um, I don't know, hopefully not all of them, but uh, definitely some of them to get some working room to get that to go back into the corner. So here are the supplies that I went and purchased. Um, the thought process is, is that I'm going to bolt, uh, put some three inch bolts all the way through the exterior wall into the interior. And on the interior, I'm going to put these one by five inch pieces of wood uh, on the inside to pull the wall on the inside up against the exterior wall. So it'll definitely support, have some support from the studs in the wall. Uh, so I got a bunch of uh, three inch bolts and nuts and washers. And then along the corner, I'm going to try to use these uh, self-drill, uh, self-drilling hex screws uh, to kind of drill through the, the corner support. Some other miscellaneous screws, and, and then I got um, some Flex Seal, some clear Flex Seal that I'm going to try to spray and, and waterproof it uh, once I get it all back together. So that part wasn't really bad at all. I got the, um, the exterior wall back into the channel. Just had to take this little end piece off here um, and kind of work it in into the channel. It really wasn't that difficult. I mean, kind of used the, the uh, putty knife to pull the, the channel over the exterior wall. Uh, but right now it's totally, totally in. Um, you know, there is some old caulk still left over that I'll just kind of scrape off with a putty knife here just to take that old caulk off. And I'll have to re-caulk that in the end after the wall is secured with the bolts that I'm putting in. I think my wall is about two inches thick, so I'm going to try to drill my first hole in this corner here, uh, right at about two and a half inches off. So I just drilled the hole through. I have the drill bit sticking through the wall, and here's the closet that I'm in. You can see, I can see my drill bit. So I'm pretty good. I actually stayed two and a quarter inches off the edge there. I could probably went about two inches, uh, but I'll put a bunch of, well, maybe three or four bolts in that radius area to hold that down pretty, pretty tight. That turned out pretty good. I cut a round piece in, in the wood there uh, to fit in the corner and then um, drilled the rest of the holes and got the bolts in there 
Uh, I have one nut on the inside. It looks like it probably bought bolts that were too long. Uh, th this doesn't matter because it's in a closet, but I might buy some shorter, shorter uh, bolts, maybe a two and three quarter inch, so that I could put a end nut um, on the outside. Uh, in the closet here, I'll probably just put a second nut up against the the back of the first one, just to keep it tight, so it doesn't come loose. Uh, you know, because this thing will travel. But uh, I'll get the rest of the the wood in here along the top, and then all the way down the side here, and that should really hold that in tight, uh, so that that's not going to uh, flap in the wind ever again, and it should hold the delaminating. Uh, exterior to, to the wall. I have all the bolts in that I want to get in. I think I'm satisfied with the number of bolts. Um, now I want to clean up that that old duct tape residue. I was able to get most of the duct tape residue off with using lacquer thinner and a, a Brillo pad type thing and see most of it is off. I'm just uh, takes a little bit of elbow grease and uh, it comes off pretty good. So I've also noticed that the lacquer thinner <clears throat> cleans up the old caulk really well. So I got some clear flex seal that I'm going to spray over top of that just to ensure that all the seams are, are waterproof. Here's the final product. Everything is put together. I put some new screws in, in the end of the channel here. And then you can see the old screws. I did put a nice new bead of caulk the whole top of the trailer. Um, <laughs> nice new bead of caulk underneath. You can see my bolt. I probably could have came a little bit lower with that one bolt, but oh well. Everything is caulked up. Actually one of my better caulk jobs to be honest. I'm usually terrible at that. And I'll probably go over some of the old seams with some flex seal because I don't feel like re the entire trailer right now. But this is the outside. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. Like I said, it's kind of Frankenstein trailer. But uh, it's definitely not going to delaminate anymore on this front side where it was before. And I can probably find some white caps to go over these bolts if I really want to. I am going to go over those bolts with Flex Seal uh, so it you know, makes them water, the seal watertight. Before I started the job, I fully intended on putting uh, wood across the wall on the inside and carrying the bolts a lot further, but I didn't end up doing that because I, I thought that this amount of bolts up towards the front and the top here was sufficient uh, to prevent it from delaminating any further. Now I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of comments about uh, what about the wires behind the wall? Yeah, I guess you're right. I, I'm a gambler, uh, you know, I, you can maybe feel it with the drill bit if you're, if you're hitting something weird behind the wall, but um, I'm not sure what you do about that, but I don't think I hit anything. Uh, I guess I'll find out uh, after I get on the road and plug everything in. Um, but uh, the electric has been on in the camper, uh, nothing shorted out, uh, my lights work and everything, so uh, it seems to have done the job. So just to wrap things up here, uh, the entire project cost uh, less than $100. Uh, 
and it probably took, uh, you know, I was able to complete it in one day. You know, injecting the, the epoxy uh, is a multi-day process for sure. And um, you know, I think this is going to hold up pretty well. Uh, only time will tell. So, uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, happy camping, everybody.